known as the Football Islands. Finally made it. Oh, take it in, boys and girls. This is Leo Kart. Love it. But, um, somebody's standing under a parasol about an incident from 40 years ago. Okay. You want to just get serious right away, do you? Oh, it's you. At last, Mark, you're finally here. It's amazing to think that we get here in chapter 5 when there's only 10 chapters in total and you'd think we were halfway through here. Technically we're one chapter away from being halfway through but you know, we made it though and boy is it a reward. I love it in Leo Kart, it's beautiful. Wow! Look Axel, we really are abroad. Look at all this weird new stuff. Oh, it's so sweet to see you excited. I sometimes forget that you're so young. Now oh, listen to you, Billy Mature Pants. You've been jumping up and down like a two-year-old the whole way here. So this is Leocott, otherwise known as the Football Islands. I hear they've turned all of the outlying islands into dedicated footballing venues. Talk about overkill. I know this is a big event, but that's just stupid. Not really. The whole world will be watching after all. Heh, <laughs> sounds perfect to me. I need a nice epic setting for my comeback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make sure it doesn't end up being a nice epic setting for a nice epic failure. Hey, say that again, Stonewall. I dare you. This is no time for fights, lads! Hey Mark, now that we're here, you should get out of the airport and have a look around Leocott Island. Everyone seems pretty excited to be here. It would be nice, don't you think? Off you go, let me know when you've finished. So indeed, we can talk to Sylvia whenever we like. We don't have to have a look around. But it would be criminal not to, wouldn't it? We're on holiday! We've gone abroad in Liar Cart. We've just arrived and they're already mocking the name of the place. <laughs> uh, good grief. But yeah, I mean, there's not too much to do around the airport itself. In fact, uh, we've pretty much <laughs> looked at it already. But that's a new formation. I haven't changed. I haven't bothered to change my formation yet, which maybe is something I should consider now that we're in the big time matches, the real important stuff. We can have a look inside the airport, but the people of this country are so stupid they call the sport football. <laughs> that person is. And would you believe we've only just arrived in a brand new country, but straight away they give us a reason to go straight back to Japan. Because we have got the map of Okinawa, my favourite part of Japan, let it be said. Now I'm not going to break the mood by going there in this episode, maybe not even the next one, but probably before the, the next match at the end of this chapter. I will take the time to go and visit Okinawa. So we can go to Central Park. This is probably where Sylvie's hanging about. Yes, indeed it is. But we want to have a look around it first because... No, I was close there. We've got a statue of a football, all sorts of stuff. In fact, if memory serves me right... Stupid sea! <laughs> 
<laughs> I hate you! That is... Yeah. Straight upon arriving at Leocot, we're met with one of my favourite NPCs in video gaming. Just a stupid dog who hates the sea. Now, would you look at this? I mean, I've just gotten rid of the opponent's names, but I'm sure it'll show up again momentarily. The people we're playing football with right now are called the Coro Coro Kids. And in fact, I think that's they're put here specifically because Coro Coro did give away some passwords which are used in a certain area of this part of the map. I'll have a look at that when it's a little bit more relevant. Right now, it's not really... Yeah, David and Sanford, you're pretty much going to be levelling up after every match. <laughs> Arrived in a brand new area filled with the best football teams in the world. And I'm leading the team with level 13s and someone who's never even played football before. Like Archer Hawkins, he's just the icing on the cake, isn't he? Right, you're Italian. I've only got one Italian voice in me. I'm not giving, me, giving any more. Volcano Cut, that's a good defensive move. And he's lost his jack. Well, he's on my team, actually. I think there's a treasure chest hidden. You know something? I've never used this. I've got so many capsules. And I haven't even bothered to use it. Let's turn some. Turn the capsule. Put in any of any colour. You have to have done some random encounters before this will work. Most of the time, it's just going to give you something silly like a cookie bar. But based on the amount of people you've done random encounters with, yeah, we got Mitch Blackston, who shoots with bruised and battered legs. So in previous Inazuma 11 games, you could just recruit anyone you wanted just by giving Coach Hillman their name. It's not quite so simple in this one because most people, you either have to defeat them in battle and then hope that they ask to join you. He's got Dark Tornado. But uh, the main way of recruiting people is to get them in a random lottery. And indeed, there are a few people which are a lot harder to get in this game because they're restricted solely to this random uh, Jack Capsule Machine thing. For example, you never get Tori and Sue Hartland in this team because they're girls, they're not allowed on the team. And the only way you can actually get them is through that capsule system, which also means they don't have any dialogue when they join the, your team. Which is a shame, but capsule machines, it's still quite simple to just put a capsule in and get a player out. It's quite nice. It's better than the recruitment in the next game. Now that you've had a wander around, we should head over to the Japanese camp. That's where we'd we'll be staying while we're here. How many words with a woo? <laughs> The Japanese camp? Where's that? I don't remember seeing it anywhere. You've only just got here, lad. It's not just a Japanese camp, Mark. Every team participating in the finals has its own special living area set aside. And in order to help the players feel at home and play at their best, each camp is based in our team's home country. And that is a map of Leocott Island. The map. We should go and get settled in the dormitory they've built over for us in our camp. Come on, you lot. Ouch! Hey, look where you're going! Huh? Hey! It's gone! My wallet! Where's my wallet? Ah! My wallet! Nothing there! <laughs> Stop! The man who bumped into you must have stolen it. Quick, let's get after him. Wow, Leo Cot. I, I think there's a reason I was intentionally freaking out over how nice this place is. Because it gives a good first impression and then it immediately loses it because you get your wallet stolen.
Mark? What's wrong, Mark? You're shaking like a blooming leaf. Th that was amazing. You're not wrong. Did he seem jump over him like that? How did he even see him coming? Well, that shot. To be that quick and accurate from a standing start, he must have eyes in the back of his head. Ahem. There are players in the world's top teams about whom such things are said. Aficionados speak of them being able to visualize the field from almost a bird's eye view. Here, do you reckon he's from one of them teams we might be playing then? Blim in blim! It was an incredible shot, but it wasn't just that. My whole body was screaming, he's amazing, he's amazing, he's amazing! What were you doing, Mark? Come on, let's go look around the dormitory over in our camp. Uh, yeah, I'm coming. So that's what world-class football looks like. And now we can head for the Japanese camp. Or the task, go see your new digs in the Japanese camp. There's a separate map which we have to go to. We're basically travelling all the way back to Japan. Except it's not the real Japan. It's a fake Japan. But it's a nice fake Japan. Here we are in the shopping area. There's two main map screens to Japan. You won't be spending too much time shopping here. But it's there. <laughs> You know, we'll have a look around it. You generally have everything you could need. I would use the capsule machine, but I haven't had any uh, random encounters. Oh, this guy's a password. Yeah. Around here, there's several people who have passwords, which you have to look up on the Inazuma 11.3 website. So I'll just go do that now, shall I? Okay, I looked it up. The way you're meant to do it is go on the Inazuma 11.3 website and find hidden footballs dotted around the site, which I have done several times. It's quite fun, but I mean, the easier way is just to go on Game Facts or watch my video because his password is build a deck. Then we have to defeat him in battle and then he doesn't join you. Rather, he just puts himself in the capsule scouting machine. So again, a bit more effort than should really be necessary. I do prefer the recruitment system of Inazuma 2, but admittedly, I love that Inazuma 3 lets people join you after random encounters. That was a new feature, and that was genius. Like, that should never go away, and it doesn't. That's the one good thing I could say about uh, the Inazuma 11 Go recruitment. Now I realise I'm actually not really in a good position to win this match. <laughs> I'm kind of over leveled because I'm using Dave and Sa Kevin and David Samford. Oh well. You may have noticed that guy had a pretty special goalkeeping move. That's why he was uh, hidden behind a password. This guy is basically designed to advertise the Inazuma 11 trading card game because his goalkeeping move is, in every sense, the Inazuma trading card game. Oh, David! Kevin! Again, evidence of how underleveled he is. Any other player would have been able to just catch up to that and intercept it and go for a shot, but Kevin missed it. I'm changing my lineup after this match, and that's provided I can win it in the first place. Please let it in. Good. So Builder Deck will add himself to the capsule scouting system. Phew! That could have been concerning! Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm exaggerating this a lot. Jeez, it's just a, it's just a guy who's added himself to the capsule machine. Don't know what colour of token he desires, but that does make a difference. I guess I'll chuck one or two in. Oh, there he is, straight away. Decker Pile don't really have a need for a second goalkeeper, I, a third goalkeeper. Would have been nice to have a third goalkeeper in the selection match stage, but now it's not necessary because we've got Darren and Mark and that's enough. But here he is anyway with his card protector. I own so many Inazuma trading cards and not because I bought them individually, but just 
I saw on eBay like an entire box of them for only like 15 quid filled with about 16 different packets and I just thought, oh well why wouldn't you? And I did not want to read that girl's out loud, that girl's dialogue out loud because it was advice on how to dump someone that was only relevant because yes you can only hold 10, 10, 100 players at a time which sadly you might have to kick some off if it gets to a certain point. So there's all sorts of moves here. We've got Wormhole, which is one of my favourite goalkeeping moves ever. Uh, perimeter Zone, I'll pick that up. I like that a lot. This is just all sorts to choose from. Warp Drive's in there as well if you want to represent poor old Jordan, who's long gone at this point. He hasn't been in this episode, and he'll never be in one again. Worst decision ah. I'm not going to dwell on it anymore because I'm sure he'd have some proverb about how dwelling on things is bad, etc. There is a shop for there, but you can't go in it. So now, let's have a look at the Japanese dorm itself. Or immediately get blindsided by a battle, and of course, I forgot to change my lineup. Let's do it now before I forget again. Let's have some actual good people there. Xavier, you deserve to be on the team. Uh, Hobbs, you deserve to be on the team. There we go, now we've got a decent lineup. So this is our football pitch, and there is both a treasure chest containing Divine Stamp. That's one of Zeus's defensive moves. We can't use that training spot for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. I guess we'll have to train with it as part of the story at some point. But without further ado, I guess... Oh, well, we've got... <laughs> this is the guy who was looking for his owner on the beach. I don't think we can ever actually reunite them, but at least it's there. Let's heal up and get in the new dormitory, which is better than a repurposed school building. This is custom built for us to live in, and it's... Mwah! Oh, I would live here. I'm not even Japanese, but I don't know, I just want to be surrounded by an Azuma National. I want to play football with them, alright? Is that too much to ask? These guys make me think I could actually play football when in reality, I definitely cannot. I'm pretty bad. Welcome to the Japanese team's very own dormitory. It's amazing! It's so big! It makes the one back home look like my garden shed! Yeah, it's massive. I could get used to this world championship treatment. You'll have to get used to training first. There's a pitch outside. I want you all on it now. What? But we just got here and the journey was really tiring. If you don't like it, you can get right back on the plane. No way, man. I'm not getting on that thing again. Just thinking about it makes me want to... <laughs> Mark, I have good news for you and the lads. You can now play all the teams you faced in the qualifiers via the extra competition route system. Really? So we could play against Australian Qatar and Korea all over again as many times as we like? That's right. And if you beat them, you'll be able to recruit their players which means anyone you played in the Asian qualifiers is now a potential new teammate. The extra competition route is still available via Mr. Firewheel over at the dormitory. Right, that is major. Now, I didn't think we'd get to do this so soon, but yes, although you don't get to, oh, and Hillman's talking about an underground door, back in the original plaza, which I walked up to but didn't really acknowledge. Okay. So I know how I said I got that Okinawa map, and I was like, oh, well, I want to get used to being in Lyokop first. I'm not going to just go straight back to Japan now that we've only just got here. But knowing that I can recruit team members now from other Asian teams, that changes things. Because it really upsets me that only one Asian team gets to be in the World Championships when there's so many Europeans. 
I do indeed intend to represent at least one player from a different part of Asia. So in the next episode, I, off screen I'm going to do those extra competition route matches against Australia, Qatar and Korea. And then in the next one, we're going to try and recruit somebody from that team and have an explore of Okinawa as well. Does that sound good to you? Because it sounds good to me. See you then!